Hi, and welcome to the VL. We are the official unofficial viewers lounge of DCP's Trinity Falls. I'm Jonathan, and this is... <laughs> oh my god, I can't do this. <laughs> Victoria. Hi, and welcome to the VL. We are the official unofficial viewers lounge of DCP's Trinity Falls. I'm Jonathan, and this is... Victoria. And we are going to get right into this today. So um, we left off last week with our second boot uh, being voted out. What did you think of the result of end of last week? Any thoughts going into today's episode about what happened last week? Um, for the most part, I think we kind of covered it last week, so not too much to add. Um, but I am looking forward to the rest of the gameplay this season. Yeah, so we saw Andrew part and then the beginning of this episode, we see um, kind of some little hints towards uh, some swap talk, perhaps from Luke, Lo, and Jonathan. Uh, we also see um, in a larger group, there's Ben, Lydia, V, Selkirk also talking about potential swaps and things like that. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious that we are most likely going to a swap um, with the editing. And um, and then we saw everyone's talking about swaps and then we see Selkirk by himself talking about um, buses, um, being on a bus, being thrown under a bus, if people have bus tickets. Um, <laughs> it was, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, Selkirk is an interesting character. So uh, it's fascinating, like when uh, he's in confessionals by himself and them just like keeping it rolling and letting him go on with with what he's talking about. So um, I did like that little one off confessional. Now, you also kind of anticipated, I'm assuming, by watching the first few minutes of this that we're likely going into a swap this week, right? Yeah, just given the timing of everything, and I just didn't think we would be seeing four person tribes going to tribal this early. So I did anticipate a swap. So they kind of get everyone together on screen and announce that there is a swap. Um, interesting swap this time because they have, they're going down to two tribes and they have um, a picture on the screen mm -hmm. where you have to select images. There are waterfalls, fish, flowers, maybe like fruit, coconuts or something. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different images that you could pick. We kind of played a little kind of as we're going along along with it. And um, I picked the top left fish. And what did you pick, Victoria? The pink flower as expected. <laughs> Which is on the bottom left. Um, so I picked the same one as I forget if it was Luke or Lee, I think one of them, and you picked the same one as Sarah, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so when it all comes about, we finally see that there's uh, two tribes. Um, there's Kirka and Iguazu. And on the Kirka tribe ultimately is Luke, Lydia, Lex, Lo, Jonathan, and V. So that means that we have Luke, Lo and Jonathan from the original Iguazu. We have Lydia and V um, on their original tribe of Kirka. And Tugla is Lex. Um, so he's kind of by himself for now. Um, and then on the new uh, uh, Iguazu tribe is Lee, Selkirk, John, Ben, Austin, Emily. So that means that from the original Kirka is Ben, Selkirk, and Lee. And from the original uh, Tugla is Austin and John. And the original, um, uh, what, what, did I, what did I leave out yet? Um, Iguazu, there you go, is Emily. So obviously didn't say someone's name yet, uh, which means that would have been Sarah. And Sarah had her own little color there. And we kind of find out that there is exile and Sarah will be going to exile, uh, will be uh, safe from the vote. Um, and so what, did, what do you think of 
the new tribe dynamics? I know we haven't gone into it yet, but just like initially, what did you think? Um, and what did you think of the fact that there's exile before we even go into like what that means? Um, so the fact that there was exile in the first place wasn't surprising to me just because it was an odd number. Um, and then in terms of the tribe dynamics, I think it's super interesting having a combo of three tribes on each of the two tribes. And I'm still having trouble keeping track of who was on what original tribe. And I think some of the players are even trying to remember that themselves. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I am um, as critical as I may get in this episode. Um, I'm fully aware that I would not remember who's on whose tribe. <laughs> I would like have <laughs> no idea playing this. I'd be like, it's all happening in one day. You know, mm -hmm. this is all like, I'm like, I don't know who's on. I mean, I'd write it all down, but it, it is very hard to keep track of. You know, you'll probably remember who was originally with you, but as far as like, we start off on three. So it's not like you can be like, okay, I know who was with me and who's not with me. So they must have been on the other one. No, you're splitting it up between like, oh, I don't know if they were on a tribe together or without kind of digging into my notes or if they were not. So it is, it is hard. And we will see later that there is a decision to be made um, that. I think has a could have a large impact on the game um that even um alex announces and uh i don't know we we kind of we'll talk about this but we don't know if people really thought this through or they were just kind of like thinking off the top just you know in the moment so before we get there uh we do go right into the challenge the challenge is called you gotta dig deep um, love this. I don't know why I like like buried treasure and stuff. So this is just fun for me. I was like, I like the sound of it. So um, you have to split up in three pairs of two. And there's three parts to it. So the first part. Um, do you want to explain it? I mean, you didn't you you're familiar with this one too a little bit, right? Um, so yeah, when I tested the challenge, I think I was doing the puzzle that time. But yeah, there's um two three legs in this challenge so the first one is two people moving stone images off of the screen to try to uncover numbers and then the second leg is two people trying to get two three digit combos and then the last one is solving a jigsaw puzzle so i mean all sounds a lot of fun to me i personally would have picked the first one just like the digging um i just and then when i saw it i was just like oh this is great because it's not hard you're just literally move, moving a bunch a ton of little files little images over and trying to uncover your six digits um yeah. and i think the only thing is you just have to communicate with the other person where you're moving stuff to Right. I mean, I, I I would argue that maybe you wouldn't even have to because you just like look and assume that someone's not going to be um, blocking you or doing the right. I, I just didn't really see a way how that was going to be difficult. Um, I was proven wrong, but um, I but then the, the second part, I will say there was three. There was the numbers were colored differently. So there would be like three pink ones, three green ones. So you can tell kind of which ones you needed for the the combination in the second one and the second round yes people knew which three numbers they had and then had to come up with um kind of which order that that comes in to unlock their puzzle pieces for the third round which was also a seven what do i want to 77 say 77 seven, yeah. puzzle so yeah i think either the first leg or the second leg would be the easiest i think a puzzle is always or the, the puzzle is always a bit dangerous, but I do think getting to the puzzle before the other tribe even gets anywhere close is usually pretty safe also. Yeah. I mean, um, we are told it's a jigsaw puzzle and I um, specifically jigsaw puzzles, I am usually really good at um, if I'm not placing first and placing second. So I would have probably jumped on that just to kind of help out the situation, but I really wanted to do the first one. I thought it was a lot okay. of fun. If uh, you know that the puzzle is, um, if you know that a puzzle is kind of the high stakes position, 
but you see a type of puzzle that is your type, do you think that's a good time to sign up for the high risk position just so you aren't obligated to be on a puzzle in the future? It's not about obligation for me. It's about the fact that you can dictate the game a little bit more. Um, you know, sometimes you need to take that power position. Uh, if you remember from Monte Carlo, I, I was a team captain and in a schoolyard pick. And so, you know, I kind of dictated how that was going. And um, yeah, I mean, it allows you to having a little bit of power or uh, knowing that, you know, I'm going to be really like, it's a swap. So like knowing that you're really good at jigsaw, you sure go ahead and do it so you can win so that you can like get in with the, these new people, you know, even just, if it's just one round, um, really kind of, instead of having to, to scramble right away, um, again, it's a mini, so it's all happening in one day, but still it buys you a little bit of time. So I would have probably have gone for the win. I would have shown my cards a little bit in regards to like how good I am maybe at jigsaws and probably just don't up to it. be like, oh, I'm half decent at jigsaws is the only thing I'm good at. But um, and you would be lying if you said that, right? I mean, I'm good at lying, but I'm not, <laughs> I wasn't good at any other I wasn't great at challenges, so, so, you know, okay. um, but I, uh, yeah, so I mean, I do understand why people would want to do well, because I think it does buy you a little bit of time. And, you know, especially if you're on in the, um, you're not in the majority of like, your original tribe is on your tribe, I would definitely be like, uh Oh, I really want to push for this win. So it depends on what place you're in. But I, I don't mind that someone's like really trying to go for it here. Um, <laughs> And the same with like, if someone's trying to lose it, because if they're like, oh, I'm in the majority, we can pick someone off. That's a strategic, uh, you know, element to the game as well. So uh, I can see that being a good play for someone too, potentially. Um, but I think we saw both tribes really go for it. Um, mm -hmm. We have to talk about the Selkirk in the room. It's, um, it's, it's really <laughs> like, this is now three challenges in a row. <laughs> um, and it's funny, uh, you know, before this, both of us were saying how much we like Selkirk and how, um, you know, but like only goes along, you know, as long as it can. And then you get to the point where it's like, I, I do think people probably like him in the game, but you've now gone to three challenges and this isn't a supplies issue. This is a you doing issue so they didn't announce right away that i caught anyway who was assigned to what because we kind of skip into sarah uh, sarah and so <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second we won't chop this up too much but um so we were trying to figure out who was kind of doing what we were able to kind of piece it together um and then we figured out that selkirk i mean through the edit and through later on in the game we find out that selkirk was doing the digging um mm -hmm. on that With tribe ben with Ben. Yeah. Now, um, again, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it now because it applies, but Ben says later on that, uh, he was very frustrated mm -hmm. that Selkirk was seemingly like putting stones on top of the stones that Ben was already digging up. Yeah. And it seemed like you could just move them off screen. So like, I didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and Ben said that he uncovered four numbers himself. Mm -hmm. um, so that means Selkirk uncovered one and they were still missing one because spoiler, they never got to round two. <laughs> um, so that, I mean, listen, we've all been part of challenges where, you know, someone on the tribe like really struggles or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's yeah, not. I, I'm very familiar with being that person yeah. once per season, though, not yeah. more than once. Yeah, yeah. baboon. <laughs> um, but um, I this I don't think there was an excuse for this. Like this was yeah, there was not an excuse to not even get to the puzzle for that tribe, I think, because even if the other tribe is good at jigsaw puzzles like 77 pieces should still give the other tribe a chance to start. So yeah, I don't think there was an excuse. I mean, get held up in round two or something, but like this, I'm like, this should be pretty even. Um, Emily even mentioned it later as well too. She's like, they have arthritis. Like what's what's going on? Like, 
And it's like, exactly like, I don't understand what is so difficult with, I can understand like a delay. Like if you just happen to be lucky and finding the numbers first, this was not that this was like, if I was playing the mole, I'd be like Selkirk's the mole. That's it. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all my questions. Selkirk's oh. the mole. So if you wanted to pretend to be the mole, would you also do something like that? Too? I would pull a Selkirk. I would pull a Selkirk. Um, so I just, I really enjoy Selkirk watching him. And I think so fascinating, um, in the confessionals and whatnot, but third time's a charm with, <laughs> with these challenges, you just, you, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I can't say more about it there, but, um, so we saw that happen. We saw that, um, uh, in round two, uh, for the other tribe, we see that uh, Lex and Luke are doing the the number combinations. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, wasn't fully following. Luke seemed to like verbally say stuff more frequently, like first and then Lex. But like Lex was like mm-hmm. second try, he got it, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And then offered Luke help and and was able to come up with numbers for Luke to say. And then again, like seemingly the second try after that happened it was they got it as well so it was i don't know what lex was doing i don't know if i fully understood that but he was doing something right and um yeah so lex and luke did a really good job with that in the second part um which moved them on to the puzzle which was lo and lydia doing the puzzle Mm -hmm. um really hard to tell how well they were doing um they weren't held up seemingly and they did it fast enough where the other tribe never left the digging elements to it. So, um, yeah, that's really unfortunate. And then amongst all this, we see, uh, it's intercut with Sarah. And so Sarah is being offered, um, you know, a little, little bit of a challenge. Um, so do you want to go ahead and describe the challenge for us? What you saw? I know you weren't super familiar with the puzzle, but I can fill in any gaps if needed. So it was, do you know what those types of puzzles are called? Is there a name? No, no I, I'm sure there is. I'm terrible with those, uh, with naming puzzles. I have no idea. I don't care. I just play them. <laughs> so it's like a puzzle where there's a grid and then in each row or column, there's like numbers that kind of indicate um, where there should be black squares and like how many black square should be consecutive. And so you kind of have to make sure that the rows and the columns match up. And if she solved this puzzle in time, she would get an idle nullifier. Now, it seemed like she was unfamiliar with this type of puzzle. There was a little example at the bottom. (laughs) Um, I've done this puzzle like a handful of times before. It's pretty straightforward, seemingly to me. Um, and I, I mean, she caught on, it didn't take her that long. Um, but, um, a little, I, I would just say if you're coming into a survivor game, you should practice your puzzles. You should know the different types, not by name necessarily, but just know what there could be and practice yeah, your yeah. puzzles. Cause I, I've done this a handful of times. If you gave this to me, I would have been like, oh, I know exactly how this, this, this works, right? Like if it's like a five together, it means that there's five black boxes together. If it's like one, 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 that means there's four black boxes, but they're not touching. So you just have to like, you know. Yeah, and And I think practicing for puzzles is um, a good idea in general, especially in the solo portion, you might not be able to rely on someone else for a puzzle and you don't want to lose immunity just because you didn't prepare something you could have. And also the other thing is because she was on exile people are going to expect that she has the advantage anyways and so it's very dangerous to go there not be able to solve the puzzle and then have the suspicion and not have the advantage exactly now i mean the good thing is is that um there's a couple things she did solve it we saw that i mean it was clearly dcp for a while um and she had like (laughs) djp d like backward cp and i was like like, you know definitely familiarize yourself with the channel and like the product the company that production company that's putting this on so those things come more naturally to you sarah 
Um, also, I don't know if it's an indicator of like how she'll do, and I think she's in a good standing, but like how she'll do post merge. Um, I don't know if she's going to win any, uh, you know, puzzle type individual immunities. Um, but uh, we do yeah. find out ultimately that, you know, she does win the, like you said, idle nullifier. And we do find out that the, it can, when it's used, it can be used um, that no one will ever know about it because you just kind of, it will never be told if it's unused and it will never be said that she had it. Um, and like if it's unsuccessful, they will never say that it's been used. So people will only know that it came into play if in fact it's successful, but again, they won't know that she had it and whatnot. So, I mean, I would just say I didn't get anything. I'm like, I'm sorry, there was no clues for anything. Nothing happened. I was just safe. I don't have anything because you never have to admit to that. I would not admit to that until I'm sitting at the final two or three and giving my speech. But what would you say was on exile? Because it's very hard to believe. Like, are you just gonna rely on your excellent lying skills to convince I'm people? Damn right I am. I'd be like, I wish I had something for you. I have nothing. Um, but and- you would never believe your, would you believe yourself if you came back? <laughs> And you said there was nothing there. Um, I would be, I, I never believe anyone, but I would be open to uh, someone potentially telling the truth because uh, you don't know if there's definitively something, maybe it was just safety or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, well, in this situation with just safety, I think it's like, I think that it could be believable that there wasn't an, an additional advantage. The thing is too, it's a mini. So everything's happening so quickly. So you going away for 20 minutes while there's like a mix up of, of tribes. So people don't even remember who's with who. Like it's, I don't know that people are gonna linger on to that. Um, and they could, but I would be surprised if that was the case. I would just be like, I don't have anything. And if you tell your closest people that you don't have anything, um, they're likely to believe you, I would think. And if they, you know, share that with anyone else, then so be it. So, I mean, the moment you tell someone something, I would think you're lying about um, what you're actually what you actually have. If you say that there's something, so I I wouldn't trust that. If you came back, and you're like, so you yeah. would rather try to lie about having nothing and having put- people be suspicious than lie about another kind of advantage. Because yeah. you could say you have the idol nullifier, and I think people won't believe it. I think you could say that you have a clue to an idol or something. I don't know why you would, um, and people wouldn't believe it. So I think your best bet now, uh, you know, again, in Monte Carlo, I say the best truths are like, the best lies are 90% of the truth. But in this case, I would just go flat out, deny, deny till the day I die. You know what I mean? That I never had anything at all. So, um, and just, you know, I don't know when there's another opportunity for someone to go in exile again. So it's not like a common occurrence, you know, that every time someone's going to be offered something, um, mm-hmm. if that's, if, you know, if it was something that like it's, it's happening every round where exile is happening, then I would have to tell the truth, but, mm-hmm. um, it's not. So I would just, you wouldn't hear from me again about it. I mean, did you not win an idol and tell no one except for me? And then, cause I was there when it happened and then you know, no one really 100% like knew you had an idol in Monte Carlo. So um, yeah, I can't believe I trusted a villain with that information. But whatever. What are you talking about? I'm a <laughs> complex player. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I mean, uh, we'll see. We'll see what she does. We'll see if she tells anyone. Do you think she will? I think she will. Just from what I've seen from her so far. <laughs> Um, I agree with you. I agree. I wouldn't, but I do think she will. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll but see. But we how- haven't even seen any idols so far, or unless you've noticed something. No, no. But yeah, we're, you know, several rounds in. So, I mean. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that there's an idol nullifier coming out first before an idol. Yeah, that is interesting. And then I guess with her comment in the last, with her comment at the end of the last tribal, I'm curious if she will start asking people about idols now that she has the nullifier, like the opposite advantage. Yeah, I mean, I, 
I like playing kind of how I've played before where like, I know where things are. I know who has it um, rather than having stuff myself necessarily, because it puts you in such a predicament. You have to make sure you're acting the same way. If you're not telling anybody about it, you have to make sure you're acting the same way as if you didn't have it. And also um, it just like, as soon as you play some, something, someone knows that you're, you were lying about it. Mm-hmm. So it's this whole thing, right? It can really put you in a bad situation. Is it worth it not nullifying an idol? Is it worth ruining your social game or having someone distrust you over one simple thing like that? I don't know, not you know, I don't know. Um, so I, I don't think it's, I, I wouldn't want it. I would, I would not want it. In fact, it's like, if you can gift it is what I would be asking about. I may just do that. I may just go back, tell people and like gift it to someone because I wouldn't want to hold on to it. Um, but anyway, so we see that um, after, uh, you know, Lo and Lydia win the, the, the puzzle, then we see that um, the, um, so that's Kirka, we see them win. And then we see the other tribe, uh, basically Lee, Selkirk, John, Ben, Austin, Emily will be going to tribal council, but there's a little catch. So Kirka now is allowed to capture a member or a tribe member of the um the guazu and the new guazu i should say and uh so they have to pick someone to save they're not going to be joining kirka they're just going to be safe for this round so it's temporary um interesting because there's a lot of new dynamics there's a lot of things that could happen we saw some and i'll try to go through this quickly because there was a lot of this in the episode but um we saw that low suggested Lee be saved. Um, and then V kind of co-signed that um, the Lee choice. Now, I thought that was an interesting choice for low because, you know, taking Lee away um, makes the original Kirka on the other tribe just be Selkirk and Ben. And, um, and then you would have Tugela being John and Austin and then Emily. So it'd be two, two, one, if that was the case. Um, now, Lo being an, uh, an, an original um, Iguazu, I mean, I'm like, okay, you're trying to- I think to- it, it was kind of like, like it didn't make sense to me at first because I thought she should definitely save Emily in that situation or not say anything at all. But then yeah. the more I thought about it, like maybe it's okay because you're taking someone out of the majority. So I actually think in terms of the yeah. people in that tribe, it was probably worse for V to be okay with Lee joining because she is taking someone from the majority of her old tribe and putting that those two in danger. I thought it was a terrible decision for Lee to co-sign that. Low, it, what it does is takes the majority away and puts Emily as a swing vote in the middle, um, which again, spoiler, we kind of see it happen. Um, but uh, you know, with V, I didn't get that. And now we saw confessional a little bit later on where V's like, I don't know what was happening. I was a little confused, you know, and it all, it, again, we understand that it's happening really quickly but you have to put pen to paper and you have to figure out, you have to write down those names. You have to figure out who was on what originally take a second. I know you don't have it. I know it goes by quick, but I do think some people did. I do think some people had it written down and were looking and knew what they were doing. Um, And in addition, it seemed like she, she wanted to work with Ben the most out of that old tribe. So if she was going to go this way, way of trying to save a close ally it should have been ben over lee yeah I think. so weird so mm-hmm. weird i don't i would love to hear uh v comments comments um <laughs> let us know why you made that decision i want to know i i just didn't un- we and we sat there for like 10 15 minutes talking about this so like we, i just we were trying to like play out because yeah at first we didn't understand low and then we're like wait a minute we get it we get it and we were trying to do that with everyone and we could not come up with a reason why you would do that other than you were just saying a name. Um, so let us know. I would love, I would love to know. And then we see that Lydia uh, suggests um, Emily. 
um you know she's like yeah you know i could so i could see lee but like i was thinking emily um and and i get that you know uh uh lee lydia taking away emily would put her original kirka three against two like in definitively in the majority so they would get rid of one of the original tugelas so i totally understood that and you would think that someone would want to be safe and lydia tried but he was like emily you, you good with that like and, and emily's like nope nope i don't want to go <laughs> like and we saw her shake out nope and so yeah. uh I think Emily just likes chaos, uh, to be quite frank. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I understand that, you know, you getting, you probably understood too, that you could be the swing and you can help, you know, socially can like put you in a good position if you can really work it. So I get that, but that's definitely the harder path. Um, but I think she likes that, you know, I was once in a similar spot to Emily, but I wasn't the one that was chosen to be saved and then I got voted out. So I would have definitely joined the other tribe, but I do admire people who aren't afraid to take risks also because it's difficult for me. Yeah, you're like, I came to play, let's play. And I think that's Emily's kind of MO. Um, which is scary. It could be really scary. I'm like, I get a bit of anxiety when I'm watching Emily. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like on at the edge of my seat. I'm, a, I'm like, I don't know what's happening. And we'll see later on in just a little bit. But like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know what Emily's gonna do. Um, so anyway, they, uh, Emily says no, everyone kind of agrees to Lee. So we are left with Lee being saved. And then to reiterate, we have Ben and Selkirk who are original um, Kirka. We have John and Austin, original Tugla, and we have Emily, original Iguazu. So one of those five are definitely going home. Mm -hmm. um, now we see a Lee confessional uh, where he talks about knowing Lex and Luke. Um, and that's why, you know, they were probably like eager to like say, yes, let's save Lee. It's funny because then we do see Luke afterwards who's like, no, I would have rather saved Emily. <laughs> um, yeah, but... it kind of seems like people might have been like blindsided by Lee in the past and they're kind of looking for this opportunity to get back at him. <laughs> I cannot wait for a merge. Lee better make merge because I want to see people come for people, people, you know, defend themselves. I want to see it all. So I hope all these people who are involved in this are all around come merge because I want chaos. Um, and some of these people are very capable of it. Um, so then we see Luke, Jonathan, Lex, and Lydia, and Lo talk about um, the fact that Sarah's probably joining uh, Iguazu. No, what's what's the tribe's name? Um, Iguazu, new Iguazu, right? Yeah. Sorry, I, I'm a little confused with the tribe names, but the tribe names are so hard for me too. They come and they go in my head. Um, Iguazu, yes, the new one. Yeah. Um, and then they all uh, seem confused a little bit, not really like they start talking about kind of the decisions that were made and stuff. They all seem kind of like, you know, it just, I don't know, it came off like it just wasn't well thought out entirely by, you know, everyone, uh, which is interesting. Maybe we'll hear more about that later. Um, and, um, and then we see that, um, you know, Ben, we, so this is where we see Ben start complaining about Selkirk and Emily complaining about the diggers, which was Ben and Selkirk. Um, and then I have a quote and I don't write down quotes normally, but like, <laughs> I love this quote. Um, this is Emily to Ben. You have the, you have the same neurotic energy that I like to work with. I was just like, I think that sums up Emily um, <laughs> yeah. perfectly. Um, and uh, it's like kind of insulting someone, but then like. Oh, but I want to work with but you. But I want to work with you because I like that because I'm the same way. Like, you know, so interesting. I can be taken the wrong way for sure. How would you, let me ask you this. So seeing Emily kind of act the way that she does. Um, if she said that to you, how would you take that? Would you be like, see you later, I'm voting you out? Or would you um, be flattered? Or like, how would you respond? I think I would respond pr 
pretty well because I, I remember in Monte Carlo, like we had a conversation about like kind of being the people who didn't talk at all in the first big tribe. And I think that I care more about whether the person really wants to work with me or not, rather than take things personally like that. So if we can bond over something that's potentially a weakness, I'll take it. And that's the trick, right? Is like really finding out what the other person values. And we see Ben go to Emily and say, I, like, basically you're my person. Like, I want to work with you specifically is what he says. And so, um, I don't know that that phases Emily, um, because ultimately, you know, we'll see later on, but Emily doesn't really side with Ben. So, um, and puts that at risk. So it, it doesn't really, uh, you know, for me, it's a tactic that I like to use where I try to find what means something to that person and then work with it. If I can, if you can't, then you can't, but, um, yeah. So, um, then what else do we see after that? So Emily and Ben talk about voting Austin. Mm -hmm. We see Austin and Selkirk talk about voting Emily. Um, Emily then goes and spills uh, Ben's plan to John. Mm -hmm. I wrote down chaotic. I mean, I love a chaotic player, but um, and then Emily spills to Austin. Emily spills to both Selkirk and Ben. Emily's spilling the tea to everybody. She's just saying like, you know, oh, by the way, they're, they're saying you, by the way, they're saying you to both sides, like truly playing the middle. Yeah, and making it very obvious that she's the one in the middle. Yeah, very lucky that this isn't a long game. Uh, again, you know, I'm, she's, I'm sure, well aware of that. So it's uh, knows that you can play a little bit more chaotically in a mini. Because in a long game, I think that can come back and bite you in the butt and you could be the name very easily. Mm -hmm. But I think in a mini, everything happens so quickly that um she can easily get away with that so yeah and me and you were kind of discussing this when we were watching the episode like do you think it's better if you're in one of the pairs to try to convince emily or convince the other pair to just vote her out yeah and i think so for me as i was saying to you i think it's easier to convince one person than it is two now, if the person's Emily, I don't know. But uh, if it's like someone else, to me, it's just easier to convince one person. I'm much better one-on-one. -on -one. I think with two people, it's much harder to get to both of them. And all it takes is a little doubt from one of them to like cancel out both. So that's my opinion. Okay. Um, I think you had a different opinion though, right? You like would rather do it the other I way. I think I, ha I have a different opinion just because whenever there's only one person as the swing position, they don't even have to discuss with someone else that they're going to go with one side or the other. So you're putting a lot of trust in that one person. But if you try to convince, like say you're trying to convince the other pair, like you, you only have to convince one of the two of that pair to go with you. And then I think both of them will end up agreeing so that's my yeah and, and and it's like that's the thing it's like you have to just kind of have a feel for it and see you know what you think's best because i mean they're they're you can argue both both you know so it really but depends. i think if the the swing is emily then i'll go with the route of doing the four people to vote her out yeah that's the thing it's like when are people going to catch on about emily i mean she shows a lot of cards in this round so mm -hmm. i don't know um, but we do see that Austin does is buying the fact that Emily's saying that, you know, I was part of a three, but I'm on the bottom of that three. I'm like, I know that game. That's what I, that's what I do is mm -hmm. like, just throw yourself at larger groups and just be like, look, I'm, yes, I'm a part of this, but I'm on the bottom of that. Trust me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's something that you see all the time, but it, you know, I think it was like bought hook, line and stinker. Um, so good job. I think Emily was doing a lot with that, that. Um, and then we also know that like Emily was saying that she knows, or John. I, John. so when she talked to John, she, it was kind of like they were catching up from a previous game and then they both know Lee for sure. Um, yeah. So there's, there's a group of people who are familiar with each other, whether they've played games before, have been hosted, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so that hasn't been talked about a lot, some, mm -hmm. but not a lot. And 
it will be interesting because I don't know. I've played games, you know, I've played about 10 ish games. Um, I do think that if I was to play games with people that I know what I thought of them in the previous game would definitely bring about like my interactions. That's why I like playing with new people. I don't like having kind of any of that weight of or responsibility of being like necessarily loyal to people or, you know, saving people. Um, we saw that in our season. Um, it can be a detriment to your game. So uh, it's really interesting. Again, a lot of different dynamics can happen, especially come merge and stuff. So especially just even in the swap, like we'll we'll see what happens next week. But yeah, but yeah, in this conversation with John and Emily, I, I was really impressed with how John handled it because he was able to kind because he could have thrown Austin under the bus to save himself, but he was able to get it off of him. And he was able to get it off of him and Austin and kind of shift the discussion towards Lee and Selkirk. And then I think he had a preference for voting out Selkirk um, just due to the challenge performance. And he was also able to get his way. Uh, well, I mean, ben, I mean, I'm sorry, Ben and Selkirk. Yeah, in that in that discussion as well we see that john mentions to emily and her face lights up when uh that ben's kind of wants lee gone mm -hmm. and so because she, she was like ben ben's more dangerous like we should like ben was a name you know mm -hmm. ben did a good job because ben ben was a name ben mentioned what he need i don't know it might have been luck but ben mentioned what he needed to mention to get the name off of him because i think they were leaning towards that emily was at least john said he was like either way it's whatever but as soon as that happened, she, you could see it in her eyes. She was like, oh, someone else against Lee, huh? Um, okay, let's get rid of Selkirk, <laughs> who's bad at these challenges anyway. You know, yeah. it's, um, we saw but that. Yeah, I, I think it was what John wanted. And he said the right thing to get it off of him and Austin and then get the ideal person out. So I was impressed by that. Yeah, they all did a good job in their own way like mm -hmm. what they were doing um with the exception of selkirk who just seemingly was just existing going along with stuff like not really like okay yeah i guess it's emily i don't know i i know selkirk's at least played another game because he has a connection to is it alex maybe or someone or some people but mm -hmm. it's um i don't know i just didn't see much of a player i didn't see someone who was who could be conniving when they need to, who is really that social, any of the elements that you need to like win a game, I didn't see it. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I would be, I can't wait for the exit interview. I, I totally want to see what Selkirk has to say about his game, how self-aware he is, um, and what questions are asked to him because I really didn't see a lot of gameplay from him, unfortunately. Um, mixed in with his poor challenge performances. Um, I mean, yeah, you're going to go early that in that way. But um, we did also see that Ben saying that he's a loyal ho to Emily and Selkirk. Um, ben was really trying. Ben was like, I need to keep Selkirk. Um, I'm trying to convince Emily, like, this is what we need to do. It's, I would have played the same way that Ben did. Um, unfortunately, he was up against some other really good players in Emily and um, John. And I even think Austin's like, you know, pretty like loyal and trustworthy seemingly. So like straightforward. So, so yeah. do you think the reason why Emily ended up siding with the John and Austin side, was it due to the pre-existing relationship with John? I think it's a little bit of that. I think it's a little bit of, she can see that Ben's a player. Um, you know, it's a little bit of everything. She's like, you know, Selkirk is the weakest link on the on the tribe. It's a little bit of everything, yeah. yeah. Um, but I do think, and, and we thought this, like, while watching it, that although we didn't know which side ultimately Emily, like, wh which side is she telling the truth to, which was really good to watch. It made a good episode. But um, we did think that it was going to be Selkirk, and we did think that she was leaning Yeah, because I think once, the, I think once it was brought up that Ben wanted to, um, go after Lee, I think that solidified it for Emily. 
Yeah, I mean, even like before that, yeah, I did. And like body language wise, I did think that she He's seemed a little that. more truthful with the John and Austin side. Agreed. And then now knowing about their like pre existing relationship or whatever, even if it's just knowing of each other, whatever it may be, it just makes sense. So, um, anyway, so we get to tribal. Um, let's just get to the votes. We see we're not done with the strangeness yet because. <laughs> Because, like, I don't get this part either. So we see John votes for Selkirk. Yes. Uh, we see Austin voting for Selkirk. Okay, makes sense. Right, right, right. We see Ben voting for Austin. Absolutely, makes sense. And then we see Selkirk voting for Emily. Now, I do understand that originally he was having a conversation with, you know, um austin saying like he was gonna vote for emily but then you've talked to your tribe mate after that like your og tribe mate mm -hmm. and you all agreed on it being austin with emily so why would you a try to put yourself in the minority but like you know your tribe mates not voting for that you you were you would know or you think that your tribe mates voting with emily mm -hmm. so if the other two are voting for you and it's a tie like that that would kick you out so even if emily was being truthful that you know if one person votes for you like that kicks you out so like mm -hmm. why is my <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll have to find that out during the exit but then we get a little bit of that kind of we get a tiny bit of the, of that explanation and it was said he had said um well, I said, I said in my confessional, so I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm like, well, this isn't the confessional is a confessional. Yeah, you can way, lie whatever you want in the it, confessional. Absolutely. It's not a priest. You know, it's not Catholic school. It's not my childhood all over again. You don't have to tell the <laughs> truth. I probably didn't then either, but you don't have to tell the <laughs> truth. So, um, so uh, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. No, just like do what you want to do. And, you know, and i don't get it i don't get it um oh so i mean wow i'm gonna watch it like three times over that uh the exit interview because i just dying to hear about it dying to hear about it love to get into his head uh yeah such an interesting character i'm gonna miss watching selkirk uh emily voted selkirk as well so yes selkirk left um and uh yeah i mean i would love to see him play another game for this just to get more confessionals i don't know that he would do well but just to just to get more confessionals out of him such an interesting interesting person mm -hmm. um which i mean and i'm a firm believer like i say this all the time i love when people are cast not i'm, I'm not saying this about selkirk just in general i love when people are cast just to be entertaining or just have different personalities you know sometimes you know you'll see in big brother you'll see in survivor and you're like this person's never gonna win I'm not, again, not saying that about Selkirk at all, because I think he has potential for sure. But you see people like that, and then you're like, I don't care, because I just want to see them play that game. And I want to see how that affects other people in the game too, mm -hmm. you know, and how it all comes apart and just, you know, watching and the entertainment value of it. So I do think Selkirk brings a lot of that. Um, but unfortunately, Torch is stuffed and it's just not, it's not going to happen. So um, let's get to anything, any final words about any of that or your thoughts on Selkirk? Like we're gonna get to the the the, the, the little chart. Um, not too much, just I'm really curious what's gonna happen next time with Lee and Sarah joining the tribe again. Um, but at least we have more to look forward to on Thursday. Absolutely. I'm gonna share my screen here. <laughs> so we can go right into this handy dandy chart that we have going on here so of course we're going to start with our uh lovely selkirk here you know what we weren't wrong uh he was on the bottom last time and unfortunately three challenges in a row didn't make the cut um so we have three um um three men out right away um and uh yeah and we usually start with the losing tribe so 
Um, there's only two tribes now, but let's go ahead and start with the rest of them. So let's talk about Emily. Mm -hmm. Emily was staying afloat. Now played dangerously, played, you know, the fact that she could like potentially be exposed. I mean, I don't know, it's a little wild for me, but I do think she made a lot of moves. She did a good job. Mm -hmm. um, I would be debating between worth playing for and the queen stays queen. Yeah. Um, so let's think about it. I mean, she got what she wanted. Mm -hmm. she... Well, so if Sarah and Lee comes back, what is the breakdown next time? It'll be Austin, John, like and Sarah. So and then... Sarah, Austin, and John are the original Tugela. Yeah. So it'd be three against Lee and Ben are two of the original Kirka. And then yeah. Emily's still by herself, but, you know, seemingly has joined with the Tugela. So, I mean, if they so, lose... Yeah, I, I think she could be Queen Stace, Queen given what what the breakdown will be next round, like the next rounds, and like I the think, next round is still in her favor. And I think they might want to lose again because I think they want to get rid of Lee. And that's yeah. like a perfect time to throw a challenge and get rid of, you know, we saw, you know, in Survivor, what was it, 41, where they were, you know, going to lose a challenge to get rid of um, Erica and they never did. Mm -hmm. And Erica won the show. So, um, you know, it's like sometimes you have to throw a challenge or else, you know, you're letting and maybe that this tribe doesn't need to throw a challenge to go to tribal. <laughs> no, no, Selkirk's gone now. Sel Selkirk. <laughs> um, but, um, so, yeah, who knows? So, I, you know what? I agree with you. Let's Emily again, not the game I would play because it's a little dangerous for me. But, but like, I think I she won't be quite in trouble next round yet. Because yeah. I think she kind of got the trust of the new minority, which is John, Austin, and um, Sarah. Yeah, she only really pissed off um, ben. ben, but like, what's Ben going to do? You know what I mean? Because Ben will have to swing. I think it will be hard for someone to convince all of those people to vote Emily out instead. Yeah, especially with like, again, she has that connection to John. I think Austin's pretty loyal. You, you showed him loyalty. So I, I don't think, I don't see him switching on Emily. Um, yeah, I mean, now anyway. So Emily goes there. Okay, so who else do we have on that tribe? Well, we were talking about Ben. Ben's now in a minority situation. Um, I, think, I think I would have to move Ben down to staying afloat because yeah. He ultimately lost the, I guess, the battle against the other two from the other tribe. And he, it seems like he almost went home if it weren't for John bringing up the fact that he wanted to vote out Lee. But I think that was more luck rather than a deliberate move. So I agree. I think I it was think, luck. Yeah. I think staying afloat's a good area for him. I think he was at the top of his original tribe, but you know, Ben work, work, John, work, John, get in with him. You know, if you can, um, I think they're going to target Lee anyway. So I don't think you're like, you know, you're staying afloat. I don't, you're not the next target, but, um, uh, hopefully you don't lose two more times in a row or I think you're in trouble, but, uh, yeah, really try to kind of just, with Emily, like men fences, just like totally get it, understand why you did it, smart move, great job, uh, let's work together, you know? So yeah, staying afloat's perfect. And then um, we have, um, so who else on the trip? So speaking of John, I think John goes up. Um, now John, to me, at least goes up to worth playing for because he probably got what he wanted. Um, he um definitely said what he needs to say i don't know if i saw any like super dynamic kind of like gameplay there i don't know if he needed to at the same time but like where do you think john's at i think john's in the majority of his i mean he could even be queen stays queen maybe but yeah i i would have advocated for queen stays queen just because i think he got what he wanted and then even if he didn't get what he wanted his name was 
more safe than Austin's. And he, after getting what he wanted, he doesn't have the threat level that like Ben has right now. I agree. I think he is. I think he's probably. So I moved him up to Queen stays Queen. I think he's probably, um, like you said, in a better position than Austin. So let's move Austin down to worth playing for right now. Um, I think that John is, um, you know, in good with Emily. Uh, obviously, as you know, uh, Sarah coming back, um, but. And I don't know if he was like super connected with Sarah. I know Austin was, but still, I think he like he has his Emily now, and then like he could potentially swoop in like Ben if he really wanted to or whatever. I just think he's in a good spot and got what he wanted in this episode. So uh, and has been doing a good job. So I would put him there. Austin, I think Austin's in a good spot with like we said, no, Sarah, Sarah coming Sarah. back, and, and he's you know definitely in good with John as well. Uh, not a target leads the target on that tribe clearly um so i mean i would put him in worth playing for what about you i think i would move him down just because like ultimately this came down to emily and he would have been going home if emily decided he wanted she wanted to side with ben and sell you'd move him lower to stay uh, no like I would um, since he was, was in Queen yeah. Stays Queen. Yeah. I think this is right now. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I agree. It feels it feels right too. Um, and then we have uh, so who else do we have in there? From that tribe. Lee was safe. Um, Lee's. Let's talk about Lee because he is on that tribe, but he's safe and he's coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, I would keep Lee where he is. I mean, I feel bad, but I think I, I, it's it, accurate. Yeah, it feels like a hate crime against Lee, but I swear it's not. I just, I'm like, <laughs> I just feel like you, you're Emily's target. I think several people will like hop on board with that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you lose, I think you're the next to go. So unless mm-hmm. you can swing something and then you'll move up if you swing something. But ultimately you were just, you were saved. You could probably argue that like, you know people in the game people like you enough to have saved you that you should put you higher up i don't think so because i think that you know yeah because even though the other tribe saved him he's going back to a tribe where like people are already talking about getting rid of him next time and i think he's banking on relationships like luke and luke had said i'd rather save emily you know what i mean so yeah i don't know if his his what who he thinks he has in the game is actually who he thinks he has in the game you know based on prior relationships or whatever so i'm sorry lee (laughs) sorry maybe this time you'll find a real idol you need the idol you need it so find it um (laughs) uh, and then we have we have sarah Sarah. so sarah was safe coming back um yeah i think she's in a decent spot i think that She's not going to be a target because obviously Lee's going to be the target. She's in good with Austin and John. I mean, I wouldn't move her up. I would put her there. She has the, the idol nullifier. Um, she went away. You know, she went away. She came back. Will people suspect her? Maybe. Will she tell people? Maybe. Um, but, but yeah, I think that we can deal. Like we can adjust her ranking depending on what she does with the information. But for now, I think. She is in a good spot just because her tribe did stick together and And she's going to come back to a good position. And I think they would probably target Austin over her if they did. Yeah. And she does have that, uh, you know, advantage too. So good job. Um, Yeah. I would keep her in worth playing for. Um, Okay. Let's move over to the other tribe now. Um, Let's start our way up from the bottom. Let's just go with Lexington, Lex. Um, we didn't see a whole lot of Lex, but what we did see was that he did, he was really good at those challenges, which makes me think that he, and he's social. Um, and what we saw last time, I, I actually like, this is weird. Cause I feel like, although I didn't see much of him, I want to move him up to worth playing for. I feel like, 
he was quick. He was helpful. I think that's going to be well received. I don't think he like acted, you know, didn't say too much when he, when he could have, I was expecting to maybe being like, you know, when they had to pick someone and they're all in the group together, he was going to be vocal about it and he wasn't, I was surprised about that. So, you know, like I was saying last episode, you know, you need to polish that up a little bit. I think maybe he's doing that. Um, how do you feel? I, I, to me, I feel like he's actually, you know, in the worth playing for category more than more than staying afloat. So I know it's luck that he's kind of in the minority of this new tribe, like, but I don't think we should necessarily take that into account because it was just random chance that he's in the minority. Yeah, and we saw what happens with the one person who's in minority. Could they be the easy vote? Absolutely. But did that happen in our season? A few times. No, it didn't. It didn't. Um, so so it, yeah, I think based off of the little bit that we saw, I think it was better than last episode to me. Because I, I also expected that he would be more vocal in the 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 saving the person discussion. Yeah, and if he knows Luke, Luke's well connected as well. So I mean, that can help him out, right? So let's move him up to worth playing for. There you go. Um, Lydia, I so we what do we see of Lydia? We saw Lydia put Emily's name out there. It got shot down by Emily. <laughs> um which isn't a good thing because it's like it makes you a why did you say emily then i mean i guess it's like to shift the dynamics of what was going to happen um but it got shot down so like people weren't on board with it does that speak to your agency does that speak to your social standing perhaps um i like lydia she did you know she did well in the puzzle but um I don't know. I'm just still not seeing anything from her that I would, I think she's just staying afloat. I, I haven't seen anything or any connections or anyone talk about her that would put her anything above that, in my opinion. Or yeah, anything I guess with Lex, you see people saying they really connected with him. So I think that's why I would move him higher. Um, yeah. But and then, I don't and think so far anyone has said they want Lydia as like a number one. Exactly. And Lydia and V are the two that are um, not in the, like, yes, Lex is not in the majority, but he's by himself. But opposite to that, or besides that, I should say, it's V and Lydia, because the uh, low Jonathan and Luke are all from the original, their original tribe. So um, if they want to bring Lex in, then you would have essentially just um, Lydia and V to choose from to get rid of if they lost. I think that might be the way that it goes. So I would just say staying stay afloat. Mm -hmm. Having said that, her other original tribe mate that's on the tribe with her V, mm -hmm. I would definitely not put in Queen stays queen. Um, yeah, I think I think socially she's doing well, but I think the I guess the mistake with the the saving the other tribe member. I yeah. think there has to be a little bit of a penalty from that because one of her original tribe members could have gone home because of that decision. Yeah, it didn't make sense to me. I don't know why you said it. Um, I also, you know, you, I guess, did you get your way? Sure. Be, but, um, but in addition, um, Lee was not one of her closest allies on that other tribe. So if she did want to go the route of saving one of her original tribe mates it should have been ben i think so yeah absolutely. i would have to move her down and i am a little bit worried about the dynamics next time because i think lexington might be able to survive even though he's the one person and she was one of the ones the confessionals that we kind of saw being like oh you know it felt like she just didn't was just saying names or like just didn't really know or was a little confused or just like you know overwhelmed or whatever the case may be it just didn't seem like someone who's like i got a plan and this is what i'm doing uh worries me because you need a plan you need to be thinking of several plans you need a backup plan i didn't see any plan so um it was just kind of like no la di da um 
I would argue, I would put Vian staying afloat because I actually think in a good position. She's only with Lydia. I don't think Lydia has a lot of agency um, from her original tribe, I mean. And looking at it, I don't think they would go for Lex. I think they would go for V or Lydia. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's a 50 50 shot. I don't know. I, I think. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm completely unsure which one it is. Lydia could be like, well, V's really good with some other people like higher up. They might buy into that. I'm not quite sure. Um, but I think given Lydia's experience with games, I think if it's between the two of them, maybe I would say that Lydia's the favorite, but who knows? Yeah, I want to put V down here. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I think that's accurate for this episode. Okay. Um, so then we have, uh, let's just say Jonathan, because he's here right now. I feel like the person that we saw the least from was Jonathan. We didn't even get to Jonathan's part. I don't know what Jonathan's part was. Um, but um, I think he's in a good spot because well, of well, we, the we, numbers. Wait, what was Jonathan? We did get to Jonathan's part. What was his part? He was the he was a digger. I'm like getting it all confused. Um, no, he, yeah, he should have been one of the people digging. Because they, yeah, they didn't announce it, but Lex and Luke were the combination, Lo and Lydia. Yeah, so Jonathan and um, V is what it must have been, because that's, uh, it only leaves them, must have been the diggers. Um, that's why I was like, I didn't hear his name, because we didn't know who were just like process of elimination. But, um, so I mean, sure, he did a good job with that. Mm -hmm. But outside of that. Yeah, I think if you're tribe swap to being in the majority, it's hard. It's harder for me to reward it as gameplay because it's not really. So I think he's staying afloat because he's probably going to be safe next time, but yeah. not necessarily due to his game so far. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, if if people talked favorably or something like that, it might be a little different, but again, I think it was just luck and he's just staying afloat. Mm -hmm. You're going to stay there. Um, and then, uh, I guess we haven't talked about low and Luke yet. Um, so how do we feel about low and Luke now with low, Again, I did understand the move that I think she was making with suggesting uh, Lee, which we didn't understand at first. And then I'm like, wait, I, we it get it. It makes some sense if you trust Emily's ability to be the swing, but. And I do think Lo could have been doing that on purpose. Um, and I think, you know, she seemingly could have been like knowing exactly what she was doing. Might have been just luck. I don't know. Might have could have just been saying anybody. Who knows? But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where to keep her. They won. Um, I think she's she's in the majority, as is Luke. But um, and she's probably like I think her and Luke are probably tr top of that tribe. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Do they stay queens? Are they worth playing for? I, I don't know. I I I might just leave them there. Yeah, see, I don't think they did anything to like move down necessarily, but well, I think we'll have to see what happens when they go to tribal again, and then we would probably adjust it. The good thing is with like Luke too, is like, you know, Lee, I think Lee's banking on knowing him. So I think he's, I don't know if Lee is good, like Lee is good, uh, or if Luke is as good in Lee's eyes as Lee is isn't good in Luke's eyes. Like, I don't know if it's like a shared kind of, you know. Oh, so, or you mean Luke and Lex? No, I mean Luke and Lee, because Lee was talking about knowing. Oh, oh okay. Lee. Yeah, yeah, Lee was talking about knowing if, Luke if and Lee Lex. Thinks that, if Lee thinks that Luke will be with him. Yeah, so I mean, although Luke might not, you know, be on board to work with Lee, I think, even though they're on opposing tribes right now, I know that, but I'm just saying when they merge um if lee survives but i i just think it's good having people in the game that are like because i do think from lee's confessional it seems like he wants to work with luke mm -hmm. and would be open to that um and lex 
but uh so you know he does have people that he knows i think he's good with new people he's good with old people like the older connections that he has um and Lowe's really good too so i yeah i don't want to touch them i just want to leave them like that I think that's our chart there. So we have four people in Queen State stays Queen. Um, definitely interesting dynamics there. We have three people in worth playing for Sarah Austin Lexington Our four people on top. I didn't mention our Luke low Emily and john staying afloat is Lydia Jonathan Ben and V and in his it's like the Sandra bench. But like it's like where Lee stays every time. <laughs> Maybe this time you'll find a real idol um he's hanging on he's been there for you know <laughs> three rounds now but he's hanging on so he's i mean technically he hasn't he hasn't survived a vote yet so luck i guess perhaps i don't I mean i don't know i don't know what but yeah it, if he survives a vote next time it will definitely be worthy of moving him up absolutely i'm going to stop sharing the screen here so we're done with our chart um yeah, those are the tier rankings. Uh, always fun doing this episode was kind of chaotic. I, I loved it. Um, and I love changing of the dynamics and seeing people play the game, you know, mm -hmm. and we saw that today. So any final thoughts on this episode or Selkirk or? Yeah, I really enjoyed this episode with like three potential names going around and I didn't pre-watch this before our watch party. Like <laughs> normally I like to spoil myself and then watch it, <laughs> but I didn't do that. And I was able to enjoy all of the ups and downs from the episode. That's like a step. That's like a step for you. Cause you, Victoria has to pre-watch everything just to prepare herself for any possible embarrassing interactions that she could have or being um, taken a, like, you know, like asking a question that's like totally throws her. So um, yeah, it's a step for you in the right direction. Um, anyway, uh, so we'll be back in just a few days. Um, and, uh, you know, Thursday, what are we back Thursday, Friday? What are we back? One of those um, days? Thursday, Friday. and then it'll be posted Friday. Friday. Yeah. Um, and in the meantime, be sure to watch um, John's recap um, from Sunday. Um, that was episodes one and two. I watched and it. I watched it. Yeah. Same here. And that has Kyle and Michael. So definitely watch that also. It's always good to hear different opinions on the episode. Yeah. And, you know, you Kyle and Michael, we both played with on Monte Carlo. So it was nice to see their faces again. And um, and then, of course, the exit interview. Um, which I'm so eagerly waiting. <laughs> like I, I can, I'm, I'm like too excited for it. It's like a little weird. Um, <laughs> um, so make sure you catch that as well, um, which will be um, on Wednesday, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll see you on Friday for our next episode. See you later. Bye bye.